In this segment of the module, we will explain blinding and dismantling an exchanger. The first step, as with most jobs in the plant, is to obtain a work permit from an authorized person. Then make a personal check of the exchanger to see that it is out of service and has been properly prepared for opening. All the valves in the inlet and outlet line should be closed and all bleeder valves open. The first part of the job of dismantling an exchanger is to blind off all the lines. Since you already know how to install blinds and blanks, we will not go into that procedure. The exchanger we will dismantle is the non-pull-through type with a split backing ring. It is the hardest type to dismantle. If you can dismantle this type, you should not have any problems dismantling the pull-through type. Before separating two pieces of equipment that will be reassembled, take time to match mark the pieces. You'll need these marks to help in reassembly. We will not repeat the match marking step each time as it is a procedure used by good mechanics for any machinery dismantling. Begin dismantling by removing bolts from the shell cover. Use a pneumatic wrench and hold a backup on the bolt. As you remove the nuts and bolts, put them into a container immediately to avoid a tripping hazard in your work area. Leave one bolt on each side of the shell cover flange to hold the shell cover in place. Hook a cable from a hoist to the shell cover. Make certain the cable is fastened to the shell cover securely and remove the slack from the hoist line. The last two bolts can now be removed from the shell cover to let the cable hold the cover. Remember to keep your hands away from pinch points and keep your feet from under the load. Swing the cover to one side and put it down out of your way and with the gasket surface looking up. Now the floating head cover is exposed. Hook your lifting cable to the floating head. In some cases, an eye will be welded to the cover for securing the cable. On other covers, an eye bolt must be screwed into the top of the cover flange. Remove the floating head bolts. Remember that the cable only secures the floating head, and the split ring backing device will be loose and free to move when the bolts are taken out. Don't let it fall on you or pinch your hand. Remove the split ring parts to a safe, out-of-the-way place. Then remove the floating head to a safe place. There are some cases where you find a spacer ring between the floating head cover and split backing ring. Watch for it, and don't let it move and pinch your hands. It can be removed when the floating cover has been removed. Our work site moves now to the other end of the bundle. The dismantling work done so far is only required for non-pull-through bundles. If your exchanger is a pull-through, the dismantling would begin here on the channel head end. Our task is to remove the channel head. Some locations require that the cover be removed first. Others remove the channel head and cover in one piece. We'll go through the entire operation by removing the channel head cover first. Again, we remove all the bolts except two from the cover and secure the cover with a hoist cable. Then remove the remaining bolts. Be alert to possible movement of the channel cover as the two bolts are removed. Protect yourself from unanticipated movement. Especially be alert to keeping your hands and feet in a safe position. Remember that all inlet and outlet piping must be removed or blinded before the channel head can be removed. You may now remove the channel head by unbolting all except two anchor bolts to hold it while you connect the lifting cable. After lifting the channel head with the cable and removing the anchor bolts, Swing it to one side and carefully place it in a safe place. The stationary tube sheet on the end of the tube bundle is now exposed. Our next task is to remove the bundle from the shell. 
begin by inserting eye bolts in the tube sheet. Be sure they are screwed in securely so they will not pull out when the cable is attached to them. In some cases, a special jig may be used. The jig is bolted to the tube sheet, and the cable can be fastened to the jig. Such a device is needed on large bundles or hard-to-pull bundles where eye bolts may not be secure enough. The power for pulling the bundle may come from a winch on a crane or a special piece of equipment like this A-frame truck may supply the power. Or a hoisting tugger winch can be used to pull a bundle in a hard-to-reach place. Or, for some small bundles, chain blocks may be used to pull the bundle. Some locations may use a hydraulic bundle extractor. They are useful when access to the bundle is limited. Whatever source of power is used to pull the bundle, it is important to move away from the cable after it is fastened to the tube sheet and before starting to pull the bundle. Pull the bundle about one-fourth the way out and release tension on the cable. It is time to connect a lifting cable to the bundle. The cable must be strong enough to hold the weight of the bundle. Bundle lifting is usually done by a crane. However, other methods can be used as long as the equipment can lift the bundle. Put a wide band sling around the bundle and fasten it to the hoist. It is important to use the correct sling to prevent damage to the tubes. The lifting cable should be tightened to hold the weight of the bundle as the winch continues to pull the bundle from the shell. The bundle should be pulled out a small amount at a time. Stop and slide the lifting sling back on the bundle at intervals as the bundle is being pulled. Continue moving the lifting sling back away from the tube sheet until it is in the center of the bundle. Then the bundle can be slowly pulled completely from the shell. In some cases, where the bundle is large or extra long, Two slings around the bundle are needed to lift the bundle safely. In either situation, make sure the bundle is balanced before removing it completely from the shell. After a bundle is pulled from the shell, it should be placed on a pallet or truck for transporting to a repair shop or moving to a site out of the way. We have seen the procedure for dismantling a non-pull-through bundle in a given location. Let us emphasize two points. First, dismantling an exchanger involves separating and handling heavy pieces of equipment. You must be alert at all times to protect yourself and others from injury by avoiding pinch points for hands and other parts of the body, as well as staying clear of cables and suspended loads. And second, the principles and procedures you have seen are applicable but the details of dismantling an exchanger may vary with the exchanger location, size, and type. Consider the needs of each job and work it safely. Take time now to answer the questions in Exercise 2 